Yea, the, they that feed the portion of his meat shall destroy him. His army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. So he's talking about the king of the south that the Antichrist comes against. He's going to stir up treachery from within his own regions. are going to come against him, and he's going to be defeated. Both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. <coughs> then shall he return unto his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. He shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him, Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. This is talking about the league with Israel, the covenant that um, has been established, not only with Israel, but with the whole region. Ultimately, it's going to be broken. Now, between verse 29 and verse 31, the Antichrist is destroyed and the beast takes over. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. He's talking about defiling the <coughs> temple, the Holy of Holies. This is the beast that's doing all this. He takes, takes out the covenant. He goes in there, sits in the Holy of Holies, declaring himself as God. <clears throat> and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatterings. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So it's talking about people who are going to commit uh, Christians and Jews to stand, make a stand for Christ. Of course, they're going to be martyred for that. They that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. It's talking about the martyrdom of many, many who stand for Christ. This is during the Great Tribulation. And when they shall fall, they should be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall shall fall to try them, and to purge and to make make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. The king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. He shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Talking about Elohim. That's Revelation 13 where he shakes his fist and blasphemes God in his tabernacle and the saints that's us sitting around the throne looking down at him <clears throat> and the world will fall at his feet and worship him because he's the only one that's been able to stand in defiance and so prosper till the indignation be accomplished but that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate, which is his residence, shall he honor the God of forces. Now this is a war God. When it says the God of forces, it's the chief war God. <coughs> and a God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. So what he's going to do, he's going to forge alliances with the chief war god. Now this is in the, an individual who's called god of munitions, the god of fortresses, the god of forts. He's an individual, <coughs> Luciferian, mighty. He's able to fashion weaponry, fortification, defenses, and <coughs> enable them to function to the ultimate end. That's why he's able to conquer as much as he's able to conquer through war. And he's able to hone it to a fine science, take out his opposition with exactly what needs to be done to take him out. Now in these days, the 
inference is that the world is going to be positioned into a series of fortified regions, fortress cities. And uh, this guy will be a master at taking out these defense cities <coughs> because he's got the help of the force god, the god of fortresses. Verse 30, This shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange god, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them, <coughs> all these gods, to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. So the inference is, tribulation period will be a time of unceasing war. The humans, the Luciferians, and the scripture, the, particularly the prophetic scriptures, emphasize the aspect of war as being a crucible of domination. In the seventh chapter, verse 24. Daniel 7. Okay. Daniel 7, verse 24. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. That's what we read about in Daniel. He goes and fights against his own position and subdues them. And each time he subdues them, he gains more power <coughs> until he becomes the dominant figure in the landscape. And he ultimately unites the world around himself. Now, Scripture teaches the one who is greatest at war will dominate all things. Turn to Revelation 13, verses 4 to 10. <clears throat> and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? We're going to stop here. I want you to go to Revelation 11, and we're going to continue. We're going to come back. Revelation 11, verses 7, down to verse 10. When they shall have finished their testimony, the two witnesses, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottom of this pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. They are the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, make merry, send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Now, Revelation 13, verse 4, you see the reason why they're falling at his feet. Verse 4, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with them? Nobody was able to overcome the two prophets for three and a half years. The beast rises, goes against them, makes war, kills them. So to the rest of the world, he's a savior, a deliverer. He comes as a, as a, um, a rescuer. Verse 7 given unto him to make war with the saints 
and to overcome them. The power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The, the, the word saints there is um, a guy and it means holy. I don't believe it's talking about humans. I believe it's talking about the um, holy ones in the angelic hierarchy. Because it says overcome. If it's talking about humans, you just kill them. And that would be it. <clears throat> the human aspect comes to the latter part of uh, what's being said. Power is given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So the whole human race falls into his hand. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience, the faith of the saints. He's talking about these individuals that are masters of the art of war are going to be killed by war. That's where we come in. The sons of God are being groomed to be warriors. One aspect of it. To uh, battle. To weld power far beyond what the Luciferians can weld. So we need to understand that the things that we're going through now are preparations. When things begin to take place on the earth and the, the Luciferians begin to appear and start to manifest their power, <clears throat> at the same time, the scripture says, the power of God, the supernatural power of God will manifest the divine Christ to those that are ready. It. God's going to pour out the spirit, the spirit of power. At the same time, the Luciferians are pouring out their <coughs> wrath and their um, afflicting influences on the human race. Those that are open vessels to the power of God will receive mighty power. That's what he talks about. <coughs> I will pour out my spirit on our flesh as sons and your daughters shall prophesy. <coughs> your young men shall see visions, your all men shall dream dreams. God's going to raise up the office of apostle and prophet. He's going to raise up the power sources again. He's going to put down the current excuse for a leadership. <clears throat> and the body of Christ will go forth in an intense period of receiving revelation knowledge of what's going on. At the same time, the church is going to be prepared for the rapture and the return those that are ready, those that have comprehension of what's taking place are going to receive power on this earth. <clears throat> the power is to prepare for the glorification process, not necessarily to battle with the Luciferians. If they get in the way of the sons of God, <clears throat> then they're going to be dealt with. But the sons of God will have a time schedule and you read about that in Revelation the message to the churches. Their main focus, <clears throat> there'll be a new order of <clears throat> divine um, dispersion of the word from the angels to the apostles and prophets to the body of Christ. It's there to prepare them for the times that are going to afflict those that are left behind. It's also preparation to get those that are open prepared for the rapture. And it's going to be a, a thrilling, exciting time. All of this stuff is going to be done away with because it's a restriction, it's a hindrance. It's darkness, it's influence is so great that most Christians can't divorce, them, divorce themselves from the world's influence in order to understand the higher purposes God has before them. So the days ahead, society is going to fragment, civilization is going to be lost, the kingdoms of the world are going to fall, but God's going to gather his people, he's going to gather Israel, and he's going to prepare them for the coming of the Luciferians. It's the only way it can be done. Uh, other than that, the church wouldn't stand a chance of surviving the tribulation period.